Mention Rossborough House and it will trigger many things in people's minds. A big grand house near Blessington, a place to walk in the country, an art collection subjected to four separate robberies, and the millionaire Bite family. For us today, the family most associated with Rossborough are the Bites, Sir Alfred and Lady Clementine, who bought the house and estate in 1952, and which was their main residence through to his death in 1994 and hers in 2005. Maintained as a museum and tourist attraction by the trust they set up, the ground floor rooms are open to the public as a tour. They are a time machine, not just back to the era of the Bites, but also to the families who lived there before they came to Ireland. Rusborough is described as Ireland's most beautiful Georgian house, and it's difficult to argue against that. Designed by Richard Cassells for Joseph Leeson, the son of a very successful Dublin brewer and property speculator, it also has the reputation of being the longest house in Ireland. The place of art in Rossborough was cemented even before it was completed, as during its construction between 1741 and 1755, Joseph Leeson toured Europe twice to acquire artworks for his new home. He subsequently became the first Earl of Milltown, and his collection was added to by later generations of his family. In 1902, the Dowager Countess Geraldine Milltown, wife of the 6th Earl, donated most of the art to the National Gallery of Ireland, as well as extensive furniture and silver collections established by Joseph. In 1931, the estate was bought by a Captain Dennis Daly. He was from a wealthy family in Galway, and at the time the captain and his wife were looking for a new home, Rusborough went on the market as the last generation of the Milltowns had no children and wanted to sell. The Dailies paid the equivalent of €700,000 for the estate in today's money values. They had two daughters who grew up in Rusborough and where the younger, Avia, later recalled an idyllic childhood for herself and her sister Anne. Through the Depression years of the 1930s and then the Second World War, the estate was running well. Captain Daly, who had served in World War I, also went back into the British Army to serve in World War II. After that conflict, the family's financial situation deteriorated, a stockbroker having lost all the captain's money while he was away fighting. Eventually they sold the estate in 1952. Captain Daly died just two years afterwards at their new home in Aylesbury Road in Dublin, heartbroken for Rusborough. London-based Sir Alfred Bight had inherited a large fortune on his father Otto's death in 1930, as well as a serious art collection that included works by Goya, Vermeer, Rubens and Gainsborough. Sir Alfred went into politics after his father's death and was a Conservative MP for two terms. When World War II started, he enlisted in the RAF, where he served in Bomber Command. He had married Clementine, a first cousin of the Mitford sisters, in 1938, and when he lost his Parliament seat in 1945, they moved for a time to South Africa. But they left following the introduction of the apartheid system in 1948. In 1952, the Bites bought Rusborough as their home and moved their art collection there. They continued to spend time in Africa, where Clementine's mother had lived, and financially supported schools, libraries and health clinics in several African countries. Back in Ireland, they were involved in a number of fine arts activities, and especially with the Wexford Festival Opera. Their house parties were famous for the mix of guests, carefully chosen by Lady Bite from the circles of politicians, artists, writers and musicians in which she and her husband moved. The saloon, which was the principal centre of these events, has a particularly interesting parquet floor of mahogany and satinwood, and it's the only original floor which survived the occupation of the house by British Crown forces following the 1798 rebellion. Among those who danced on it together during the Bites' time were Fred Astaire, and famed Irish dress designer Sybil Connolly.
The room next door is the library, where Sir Alfred and Lady Bight were sitting on April 26, 1974, when an IRA gang led by British heiress Rose Dugdale broke in and stole 19 paintings. The Bights and their staff were roughly treated during the incident, but the paintings were recovered two weeks later in Cork. There were other art thefts in 1986 by a gang led by the notorious Martin Cal and in 2001 and 2002, but most of the paintings stolen in all of these were recovered eventually. The Alfred Byte Foundation was established in 1976 and is based at Rusborough, from where it manages the ongoing cultural work initiated by the couple who had no children. In 1987, Sir Alfred donated 17 masterpieces, valued at up to £100 million, to the National Gallery of Ireland. He was made an honorary Irish citizen in 1993 in recognition of his philanthropy. Among the new installations at Rusborough is a gallery devoted to photographs taken by Sir Alfred, who became fascinated by the camera when he was a boy. A huge archive of pictures and film was discovered in 2008, which chronicles the life of a glamorous couple living in high society. The installation includes a recreation of Sir Alfred's dark room. Like many, I have been through the building before, and I've heard many of the stories. But it is in the nature of places like Rusborough that every revisit brings new insights into a time and place that was not the life for most of us, but is still an important part of the fabric of what we are as a people today.